Hey guys, Maple Tiller here. Welcome back to Rants and Draws, the series where I talk about warriors and, well, draw. Today we're talking about the recently released preview for the upcoming book in the Warrior Cat series, and book three of a starless clan, Shadow. And I learned of this preview's existence from this post. To say I am not excited is an understatement. And we're drawing Icewing and Hairlight, two of the few voices of reason in this <laughs> preview that I'll get into. First off, the prologue. Surprisingly, it's a very heart POV. It's a bit of a flashback to Darktail's rule, and we get to see more of the cause of Barry Hart's motivation against anyone she considers an outsider. While I can sympathize with her to a point, with her trauma surrounding nearly being killed by Darktail and him almost destroying ShadowClan, it really is a very different situation than what's happening in the current day. A few warriors changing clans to be with the cats they love is very different from a group of unknown rogues taking over your territory. And one bad experience with someone doesn't justify hating any cat who is different from yourself. Next up is chapter one, with Frostpaw, surrounded by an injured river clan after Shadow Clan's attack. Tigerstar gets Owlnose to tell everyone the truth, which is that he refused to go through with the Nine Lives ceremony as he didn't feel like he would make a good leader. I appreciate getting some honesty here at least. I'm pretty tired of all the secrecy. <laughs> While I agree with Tigerstar that RiverClan clearly needs help, I still disagree with his methods and think there were better ways to go about all this. Hairlight tries to calm everyone down when Tigerstar asserts his rule over RiverClan, telling everyone to get their wounds tended to and to hunt if you're not too injured. And then cats like Duskfur had the audacity to turn on him, calling him a ShadowClan cat as he stayed there for a time when he was exiled. It was very frustrating to read. I understand not wanting to listen to Tigerstar, but don't gang up on your own clanmate for trying to help organize this mess. And it's RiverClan's own damn fault that he was stuck in ShadowClan for a while anyways. <sighs> Anyways, Frostpaw considers telling the clan how she's not sure if she really has a connection to Star Clan, and that she might want to retrain to be a warrior instead of a medicine cat. I'm conflicted on that whole idea. She seems to really enjoy being a healer. At least, she would under normal circumstances, which RiverClan is dealing with anything but right now. So I can understand her not wanting all these extra responsibilities that have been thrust upon her at such a young age. Tigerstar leaves a couple of warriors and Cloverfoot in RiverClan to help out. Cloverfoot joins Icewing as temporary leaders for RiverClan. I mean, I'm here for it, as Icewing is one of the only cats being reasonable at the moment. Of course, Duskfur has a problem with this too, as Icewing was another previously exiled cat. <laughs> so over this. One of the big ideas in this arc is cats changing clans. Why are we having such big issues with cats who had to live somewhere else for a little bit under circumstances completely outside their control? The last bit of that chapter is Icewing approaching Frostpaw, saying to come find her later as they need to talk. Finally something interesting after a bit of a difficult chapter. Maybe it's about all the mysterious goings on in book one? Wishful thinking, maybe. <laughs> Chapter 2 is a Sunbeam POV. A cat I can agree with. She feels torn about what's happened. Wanting to help RiverClan, but wishing it hadn't come to a battle. Yeah, I'm with her there. I find her even more relatable when she sees Nightheart in ShadowClan camp. I adore her line of, He must be here for me. But, really? Got a little chuckle out of me. <laughs> Cause yeah, it's ridiculously presumptuous of Nightheart to storm in and try to join ShadowClan as Sunbeam's mate, with no prior discussion with her on that topic. She's appalled, as she absolutely should be. And as Nightheart talks up the two's relationship to Gullswoop, saying stuff like, we fell in love when we went on that mission. Boy, have we not heard of communication? Let's not assume the other cat's feelings, please. And even worse, no one lets Sunbeam speak, as she tries to find privacy to talk with Nightheart. 
Even Tiger Star gives him permission to stay in Shadow Clan for a time, without Sunbeam getting a single word out. It's really frustrating. When she finally does get to speak with Nightheart, she tells him how she feels. That the two barely know each other, how could they be mates? Correct. And that she doesn't even know if she wants a mate. Ace vibes, I'm here for it. <laughs> she lays everything out and tells him that he should have told her his feelings first. Not done what he did without warning. Absolutely. Nightheart at least says one thing right though, that if Sunbeam doesn't want to be mates, he'll respect her choice. But he still hopes that he'll be allowed to stay in ShadowClan anyways and be her friend. It also just makes it seem like Nightheart is confusing his desire to leave ThunderClan with his supposed feelings for Sunbeam. I am a little disappointed in Sunbeam's decision to give Nightheart a chance. I just feel like she kind of feels forced into it. I really don't want them to end up together. I do not want another instance of feeling like the she-cat is being worn down by the tom until they eventually get together, when it was pretty clear that there weren't any romantic feelings on her side. It's just a theme I've seen happen in Warrior Cats a few times now, and it really bothers me. Chapter 3. Nightheart. Yay. I miss the days of when he was just a little background character with no personality that I adored with all my heart. Anyways, this is a gathering chapter. And Nightheart won't even explain to his worried former clanmates where he went. Nice. Anyways, gathering stuff. Leafstar is furious to learn what Tigerstar has done, which I totally get. Even if his heart's in the right place, Katz got hurt because of his choice, and his track record goes against what he says what his plans are. Just staying in RiverClan until they are able to lead themselves. That said, I think I do believe him. I think he really just wants to help. It's just a messy situation all around. And Bramblestar. <laughs> Doesn't seem to be able to form an opinion on the matter whatsoever. Trailing off into awkward silence. Thanks, StarClan, for a competent deputy squirrel flight. Someone please promote her already. After Leafstar asks for RiverClan's thoughts, Icewing gives a pretty reasonable response that things have been difficult, and Tigerstar's arrival had not been welcome, but that things have been running smoother since. But from the sounds of it, the Gathered Cats disagreed with my assessment as they broke out into yowling. It wasn't even RiverClan complaining, but SkyClan and ThunderClan saying things like doubting Icewing due to her time in ShadowClan. Again. And how none of RiverClan must trust her. Really? <laughs> Can everyone please just relax and leave Icewing alone? She's just trying to make the best of a bad situation. At least Squirrelflight steps in to refocus everyone. Icewing admits to RiverClan's recent string of lies. And tells them much of what's actually been going on. And I think that's great. Honesty is only going to help from here, in my opinion. I appreciate some of Nightheart's thoughts on everything that Icewing said. Some of. <laughs> he thinks that ThunderClan may have coped even worse if they were in the same situation, and I agree. They could barely handle missing Bramblestar, all while having a fantastic leader in Squirrelflight, after all. One thing that does bring my suspicions of Tigerstar back is him refusing to let other clan's medicine cats come in to help Frostpaw, instead saying that Puddleshine and Shadow Sight have it under control. This shouldn't be an entirely Shadow Clan thing. All the clans should come together to help River Clan where needed, especially since Shadow Sight no longer has the connection to Star Clan he once did. If the whole point is helping Frostpaw with her connection, why is this the solution? Barry Hart ends up causing some more troubles, saying it's too easy to change clans. Mothwing brings up Greystripe as a negative example of this, which seems really weird to me, as it was a very long time ago, and it kind of went fine. Yes, he returned to ThunderClan in the end, but he was loyal to RiverClan during his time there. What's the point we're trying to make here? The conclusion is that the cats trying to switch clans should complete three tasks instead of just one. Fine, whatever. <laughs> Finchlight gets a chance to speak with Nightheart, and as annoyed I am with Nightheart's character, 
It is nothing compared to how upset I am with how the Aarons randomly started writing Finchlight. Being a supporter of her brother, to being outright terrible to him over the exact same thing. And now to missing him. Which seems in part due to how much extra work she has to do without him. Ooh, no thanks. And that's the end of the preview. I can't wait to read more. <sighs> thanks for watching. Clearly I have some complicated feelings about this arc. I'm really am really intrigued by all the mystery they set up in the first book. But I feel like it's just being overshadowed by all this repetitive bickering. I'm still looking forward to the next book. I think there's some salvageable stuff here. But oh boy, are the errands not making it easy for me. Let me know what you think about Shadow if you've given the preview a read, and I'll see you next Thursday.